Hi, my name is Claudia. Nice to meet you. Today we will be talking about pragmatics, specifically about cooperation and implicature. At first we have to assume that a communication is based on cooperation and the general aim is not to confuse or trick and in general not to withhold relevant information from each other. These apparently pointless expressions are called tautologies and show the speaker's or writer's intention to communicate more than is being said. This seemingly nonsensical expression has an additional conveyed meaning. It is called implicature. In our example, we can find two implicatures. No opinion, either good or bad, of the speaker on hamburgers and the second implicature is that the speaker thinks all hamburgers are the same. So, now let's move on to our next point, the cooperative principle. Yes, you're right, our first sentence included that already, but there's way more to say. It is important to know that the conveyed meaning of the speaker contains the relevant information to answer the question being asked without any important information being left out. This cooperative principle can be split into four so-called maxims. We'll now have a closer look at the, these four sub-principles. There is the maxim of quantity, quality, relation, and manner. The first maxim quantity makes sure that all the relevant information according to the question is given, not too much, but just the right amount of information. Next, there is the maxim of quality. In this case, it's the speaker's intention to make the answer honest and truthful. Don't say something you believe could be untrue, or something you lack adequate evidence for. Now, there's the maxim of relation. It's only about being relevant with this maxim. Last but not least, there's the maxim of manner. This last maxim is about showing the right manners in the right situation. Be brief and orderly and avoid obscurity of expressions and ambiguity. Using these four maxims, people try to be as clear, truthful, and relevant as possible. Of course, it is not always possible to follow all of these maxims in every situation. If people are unable to adhere to the maxims, there are indicators which can be used in order to show that the speaker is trying to follow but can't promise to fulfill all the criteria of the maxims mentioned previously. These expressions are so-called hedges and examples are following, matching the maxims. Here are examples according to the maxim of quantity. It is important to note that there are situations violating this maxim, such as courtrooms and classrooms. Here is another example according to the maxim of quality. And another example according to the maxim of relation. And our last examples according to the maxim of manner. Got this? Great! So now let's get to our last topic of the video. The following aspect is seen by many linguists as a central part of pragmatics, implicatures. There are six different types of implicatures, conversational, generalized conversational, scalar, particularized conversational, properties of conversational implicatures, and last but not least, conventional implicatures. Conversational implicature conveys more meaning than is being said. Speaker 1 assumes that Charlie hasn't arrived. Speakers use implicatures in order to communicate meaning and the listener has to recognize and understand the conveyed meaning through inferences. If the listener doesn't have knowledge of the context of an utterance, but they still understand the conveyed meaning, the speaker may have used generalized conversational implicature. The underlined indefinite article indicates that the speaker doesn't own the bottle. Whenever an expression with an indefinite article is used, the listener can assume that it's neither the speaker's nor the family's belonging. That's not a secret. We all know that. But let's take a closer look on the scale of values. Indicators of a scalar implicature are, for example, all, most, many, some, few, always, often, sometimes, and so on. 
Thus, in the case of scalar implicature, it is very important for the speaker to follow the maxims of quantity and quality. The speaker selects the most appropriate word from the scale above, which is most truthful and informative according to the situation. The implicature in this case would be that the lecture is never uninteresting, which is indicated by always. But watch out! There are different types of scales. One of these is the scale of likelihood. Of course, there is an example for this one as well. Words on these scales are possible, likely, unlikely, safe and so on. Now let's get to a quite interesting and funny implicature, the particularized conversational implicature. Saying yes or no seems boring to you? Then listen closely now. Utterances like yes or no are avoided and replaced by longer, more complex utterances. For the listener, it's important to understand the context of the utterance. Otherwise, they won't be able to understand the conveyed meaning. So what do you think? Does the speaker be like chocolate? I'd say yes, of course. Actually, as much as the Pope is Catholic. And to be honest, he doesn't like chocolate. The next implicature is the properties of conversational implicature. It is based on the assumption of the speaker's cooperation and use of maxims. These properties can be calculated, suspended, cancelled, reinforced. So in our example, the speaker can deny or reinforce the meaning of the implicature. Suspension, cancellation, reinforcing. Last but not least, let's go ahead and talk about conventional implicatures. These aren't based on cooperative principles or maxims and they don't have to occur in conversations. Their interpretation doesn't depend on a special context, unlike the generalized conversation implicature. To make the last implicature a bit clearer, we have one example. The contrast is created by using a specific word, but. There's always an association with a specific words that convey additional meaning. In this first example, it is but. So let's get straight to our next example. The difference between these two statements is that in the first sentence, it is meant to be an addition after end. So I worked on the assignment while I listened to music. Whereas in the second sentence, it is a sequence of actions. I fed the dog and after that, I left the house. You see how flexible the word end is? It can be an addition or indicating a sequence. How cool is that? So let's have a short recap of what we've learned together today. We started with a conversation being a cooperation and underlying the cooperative principle. The cooperative principle consists of the four maxims, quantity, quality, relation, and manner. Next, we talked about hedges, little words indicating the evidence or truth of a statement according to the four maxims. A major part of this tutorial consisted of the six different types of implicatures, conversational, generalized conversational, scalar, particularized conversational, properties of conversational implicatures, and last but not least, conventional implicatures. I hope you enjoyed this video, and see you soon!